Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from a very beautiful and sunny Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Today I have a special treat for you. I wasn't sure I was going to get this project done in time, but it is part of a blog hop that is using layering stencils as the technique. And this is with the Totally Techniques design team, one of my favorite, favorite projects of the month. We always have a project on the last Friday of the month. So I decided to use the Plenty of Patterns decorative masks. These are brand new in our annual catalog. And oh my gosh, I can't. I only used one of them. I can't hardly wait to use the others. Maybe we'll do a little test run with the rest of them. I think that'll be fun. Anyways, our challenge was to do layering stencils. I'm like, oh my, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to use more than one, right? So that's exactly what I did. I have a very fun project. I've got three different colors to share with you today. And I can't wait to get started. Let's flip this camera around. So these are those Plenty of Patterns stencils. These are so fun and easy to use and they make spectacular backgrounds on your card. So you can really personalize what you're making. Also, we're going to be using the Sunny Sentiments. This is a brand new sentiment set from Stampin' Up! in the annual catalog. I love the funky fonts on here. Our ink colors are going to be Fresh Freesia, one of our new ink colors, Coastal Cabana, and Daffodil Delight, as well as a Jet Black Stays On ink pad. So the dies that I chose for today, this is the Hippo and Friends dies. And I just really like this set of dies. There's a lot of labels in here, as well as some dies that go along with the Hippo stamp set. I'm trying to get this back in here. There we go. Lots of dies in here. You've got balloons and balloon strings and all kinds of little goodies. We're gonna be using these two dies from right here. And then I'm going to bring in the pierced bloom dies. Look at all of these. You get a label and a bow and lots of leaves and flowers. This is a fabulous set of dies with stitching. So that's kind of fun too. Let me put this away. I'm just going to be using this flower out of this set of dies. And this set of dies actually comes with a stamp set. So you can buy both of these um, until the end of June. These are available with a 10% discount after the end of June. They're going to separate them. So you can still get them, but you won't get the discount when you buy them together. Okay, so I think one thing that I wanted to share with you before we get started, I wanted to show you what these look like when we actually put them on paper. So I'm going to bring in my my grid paper. Did you guys know that you can get packs of this? You can buy this for your own desk. You don't have to be a demonstrator to get this. So I've got some typing or printer weight paper here and I decided to use these blending brushes with the stencils because oh my gosh these are just like the softest most wonderful little things and they work really nice. So I thought I'd test these out for you. I haven't used this one yet, so that's kind of fun. And I'm just gonna tap my blending brush in here to get some ink in it. And then when you use a blending brush, you start off of your paper so you don't get globs of color and you just do a circular motion and bring it right in. Now this is gonna leave a very light impression. Let's look at it. Oh, and then you can just keep adding ink until you get the color that you want. You can make it as dark or as light as you would like. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's try another one here. How about these pretty little flowers? Like I said, I, I only used one of these stencils to create this project. Now this time I didn't start off my paper, so you can see how much darker it is there. Really neat thing about this is you can do kind of an ombre effect. I didn't re-ink, I just kind of kept going down my paper and look at how it's dark and then it gets lighter. That's really pretty too, cute little flower with leaves. And then we've got these babies, whoa, I like these. 
I think what I'm gonna do, let's try this. I'm gonna start in the middle and get it really nice and dark and then just keep going to the outside. Now that's gonna give it a little bit of color and we're gonna get that ombre effect in there too. I wanna make sure that you hold your stencil in place. If you want to, you can tape it down with some temporary tape. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, pretty, pretty. Yeah, I love these things. They're just, you can be so creative with them. This time I'm gonna start darker on the outside. And then go to the inside and see what that looks like. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? These are so, so pretty. Now we have one more here, and this is the one we're gonna use to make the cards today that I'm gonna share with you. And as long as we've got our um, Coastal Cabana out here, I am going to get started. We're gonna make two different cards. Well, they're the same, but different colors. So we're gonna do Coastal Cabana. And I'm gonna get out all my little pieces here. We've got an envelope. We've got black and white, a scrap of Coastal Cabana. Let's see, what was this for? Oh, I know what that's for, that's our layer. We've got a scrap of black and then our front layer and our mat. So we're using lots of paper layers and this card is really quite simple, but when you layer it up like I'm doing, it is inexpensive, first of all, to do that. It doesn't really cost any extra postage, but it just makes your card so much more spectacular. We're gonna burnish that edge with our bone folder. This is five and a half by eight and a half, by the way. And we're gonna use this black layer and then this white layer. The white layer is three and three quarters by five, and then the black layer is an eighth of an inch bigger at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I'm gonna bring this in. And this little piece is three quarters by four. We're gonna also stencil that up. So let me set these aside. We're gonna be using the scallop stencil for our project today. I don't know that there's a right or wrong side to this. So just so you know that, but I know that it does have a definite pattern. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting it straight here. And here comes our Bermuda. And I'm just going to start off my page. I want this to be fairly light. And I'm just gonna swirl it around. Now these blending brushes make this so nice, you guys. You get three in a pack. I'm not sure how much they are. I think they're about $12, but they're so, so nice for blending, stenciling. You can do you know, the edges of your cards if you like to sponge the edges of your cards. These are so much nicer. Okay, so are we ready for the reveal? Oh, look how pretty that is. Now, I could have made it darker, but I kind of like that ombre look. Now we're gonna do this little piece, and this is just a little element. Doesn't take much extra, but we're gonna, whoops, I need to get this straight again. We're gonna put this on the inside of our card. So hold on to it. Look at how easy that is. This is going on the inside, boom, cute little layer. Now, as long as we're here, I'm going to bring in an envelope and we're gonna make our envelope match. So I'm just going to cover up the rest of the envelope. I just want this on the flap and this stencil just perfectly fits from side to side. It's just big enough. Now see how that got kind of globby right there? That's what happens when you go straight from the ink pad onto your paper. And again, if you wanna you know, dissipate that ink a little bit so it's more even, you start off your paper and come in with your swirling. I, I don't have a lot of experience with these blending brushes, but I have been using them more lately. And oh, I just, I really, there's just, I think there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful things that I'm gonna be doing with these. Okay, 
<gasps> Look how pretty that is. That's just our envelope flap. Decorate your envelopes. People love to see that pretty coming in their mailbox. Okay, we've got this stenciling done. Now, the other thing that I had to do, um, remember, this is a layering stencils technique. So it's like, oh, what am I going to do there? I'm going to take this little flower and I'm going to die cut it out of the middle of this basic white scrap. And it doesn't matter what color you use because we're going to make a stencil. We used the decorative mask to stencil. Now we're going to make another stencil. And this is where the technique comes in, layering stencils. So I'm going to put one stencil over the top of the other one. This is our mini emboss, stamp and emboss, and in, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let's get it right. If you want to look that up in my online store, you need the right name. <laughs> okay, and as long as we're doing that, we're going to also die cut a little flower out of a scrap of Coastal Cabana. And this will be just a little embellishment for the front of our card. Okay, so here's our little flower. That white flower I'm gonna save and use that for something else. We're not gonna be using it on this card today. Okay, let's do our double and stenciling technique. So here's my idea. I left this nice and light, and now I'm going to bring this in. This is my negative from my die cut, and I am going to do the layering stencils. I'm gonna layer this on top of what I've already stenciled. So now I've met the challenge, right? And I want these to be very, very dark. Look at that, isn't that pretty? And you're just gonna do that as many times as you want. You can use punches to do this. You can use any type of a cutout. And this is just a neat way to make your own background. You could make, you could make some, this looks like designer paper. It's like making your own designer paper. And you can do it in any color you have ink for. You're definitely gonna wanna get some of these blending brushes and pull out your punches or dies and see what you can use to do this layering stencil technique, because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, lots of flowers there. I think we need a little bit more flower right over here. I'm trying to get them very random. I don't want it to look very uniform. That looks probably great. Okay. Now we're ready to put our card together a little bit anyways. Where'd my glue go? Right here. I'm using our multi-purpose liquid glue. This is my favorite type of adhesive. I like it because it stays wet for just a little bit, giving me that room, that wiggle room that I need to get my layers straight. You don't want to use a lot of glue. I've heard from people who say, oh, they use the glue and they get so messy. You're using too much glue. I am touching my cardstock and scribbling with my glue. I'm not up here pouring it out. Very little glue. It also goes a long ways. So there's a little savings tip for you as well. Okay, so pretty so far, right? Um, I'm going to put the inside together right away here too. So we have... Um, a black strip that's one inch wide by four. This is our three quarters by four inch basic white that we stenciled on. And now we're just going to add this to the inside four by five and a quarter inch basic white layer. This is what I'm putting inside my card. Look how pretty that is. And it's just a strip of paper that we stenciled, right? This really spruces up the insides of your cards. I firmly believe that the party should not end when you open a card. So, so far so good, right? Okay, now we're gonna take this layer. I'm using Stays On ink today because the Hello in the Sunny Sentiments is a very thick font. And I just find that the Stays On ink gives me a better impression when I have big fonts thick, solid fonts like that. And then we're going to 
die cut this with the frame from the Hippo and Friends dies. And then we're gonna take a scrap of black and we're gonna die cut this. And we already have our flower right here, so we're ready to go. Hang tight, I'll be right back. And here comes our label that turned out really nice. You may wanna use a little bit of temporary tape to hold that in place so your die doesn't move on you because you definitely want your sentiment to be straight, right? And we're gonna grab some dimensionals. Do a dimensional here and a dimensional here. Oops, where's my take your pick tool? I like to do this. My friend from Canada taught me to use your take your pick tool to get those dimensional backings off and it's just so much easier. Let's see, I think this time I may wanna go this way. I got um, another color. We're gonna make another card like this just because it's fun. And I've got another color to share with you where I made it a little different. Oh, that looks really cute, right? Okay, then I'm gonna put a dimensional on the back of my Coastal Cabana flower. And we're going to add that right up here. Cute. And then I'm bringing in my Baker's Twine Essential Pack. You get five different colors of Baker's Twine in here. This is new in our annual catalog. And I'm going to just tie a bow. I'm gonna leave my tails fairly, a little bit longer than I normally would. I don't know if I hear a lawnmower outside or if the husband just cranked up his motorcycle. Not sure. Something's going on out there. Okay, here we go. Nice little bow, mini glue dot, and I'm going to kind of curl this up a little bit so that it doesn't stick out under my baker's twine. So I've got that curled up like that. And I think I'll put this right over here in the corner. And this right over here. I think that just looks really charming there. What do you guys think? Where's my envelope? Right here. Oh, we're not done yet. I've got some of our black matte dots. And this is only a half a pack. I cut this in half for some reason. I don't even know why anymore, but I am going to add some of these black dots. I like to do three embellishments. That's just a good number. I'll put one right here, one right there, one right there. Look at how cool that is. And here is our beautiful project, layering stencils. You guys wanna see another one? Yeah, let's make another one. We are going to do the same thing here that we did on the last one. I am going to why don't we use a different, let me use a different stence. No, this one's got flowers on it. We're going to stick with this one because it goes along with the flower dye. Otherwise, I would have. Okay, so we're going to get this lined up. I'm going to speed up my camera now because I've already kind of talked you through this. And we'll do this one up. Great. Okay. This is um, fresh freesia, by the way. Just so you know what color I'm using. Do the same thing for the inside. And now we're going to do our double layering. So I'm going to, I'm turning this over so that I don't rub any of my Coastal Cabana onto this layer. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put this card together. I'm gonna to come back and then I will show you this one done and also I have a yellow one, so hang tight. So here's the card we made out of Coastal Cabana, right? Very, very cute. 
Here's the one that I just finished with the new Fresh Freesia, one of our brand new in colors. And notice I put my sentiment down here a little bit further in the corner. This one I put right in the middle. And last but not least, my first card that I made to try and figure out this project was Daffodil Delight. And so here is that. And this one is a tall card versus the landscape cards. So there we go. Now, blending brushes. You can take these and wash them out if you would like, or you can collect enough that you have them in your favorite ink colors and just continue to use this one for yellow, this one for reds, this one for blue and greens. Completely up to you. But if you'd like to clean them off, you can just continue to brush them like this because that color really does go away eventually. So you can clean them like that or you can take them and wash them in soap and water. Don't put them in your dishwasher. I don't recommend that. I don't know what would happen because I haven't done it. But I plan on collecting enough of these that I have them for all of my favorite colors. And again, you get three in a package for $12. And also this awesome Baker's Twine, five different colors in this pack. It's called Baker's Twine Essential Pack. You can look that up in my online store by the name and the black matte dots. These are nice embellishment. They're not too blingy, but they just add that little extra something that a card should have. Now, remember, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to earn your business. This is my current host code. You can use that when you find my online store on my blog and shop with me and order any of these products that I've shown you. Don't forget the plenty of patterns decorative masks. These are so cool. And that's what you're going to look for, decorative masks. And they'll all pop up, anything that we have in, in stock. So very fun layering stencils. What a cool way to make your own background paper. Decorate up those envelopes. Don't forget your insides. Just a little bit really adds a lot. Don't forget to click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. And also, when you click right up here, that's going to take you over to my blog where you're going to find these projects and then you're going to find a hop. So a list of other people that are doing this layering stencil blog hop with me and you can click and go to each one of theirs. This is a global design team, meaning we have demonstrators all over the world that are going to share their creativity with you using the same technique. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video. I hope you have a fabulous holiday weekend here in the United States. It is a holiday weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.